So good morning, everyone. And we're going to call this meeting to order at 10 a.m. Could we have the clerk conduct a roll, please? Yes, thank you. Mayor Clarkson, are you present? I am. Deputy Mayor Windover? Present. Councillor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Franzen? Present. Councillor Lambshead? Present. And for staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer? Present. Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works? Present. Ann Ruth, Deputy Clerk? Present. Bianca Dragicevic, Legislative Coordinator, Executive Assistant to the CAO? Present. And Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services Clerk is present. Thank you. We're going to remind council members of their obligation to declare any pecuniary interest they have at this time or at any time in the future. We need a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, Councillor Armstrong and Councillor Lambset. All in favor? Motion has carried. Staff reports and presentation. Uh, Donna, would you like to start your presentation? Thank you, and through you. Thank you. Uh, so we'll uh, start the first slide, which relates to a uh, reminder about the strategic priority themes, the vision and the mission statement for the municipality. So just a reminder of what those are. And the next slide is a list of the services provided. So they, there are administrative, building, planning, bylaw, emergency services, public works, recreation and community, waste management, water and other, which is uh, relates to the library, tourism, healthcare, policing and heritage. And the next slide just gives you a list of the departments that look after all those services. So just an information slide to let you know the various departments involved. So the agenda today, we're going to talk a bit about the budget, some cost savings contained in the budget, waste management, capital projects, some committee updates, the county official plan update, short-term rentals, and a bit about the election. So we're going to start out with the budget. So the budget for 2022 is 22.1 million, which is an increase of 54% from 2021. And that increase largely relates to a $7.1 million increase in capital spending for the new build of a shared uh, recreation and facility and recreate public works and recreation of facilities building. So that's uh, the main reason for the increase. And just to let you know as well, the ECA has been approved uh, by the ministry for that build and the final design and construction documents are currently being prepared. So the next slide relates to the municipal apportionment of the budget. So the biggest portion, not surprisingly, is the 50% uh, 50 share for capital and the smallest with recreation and facilities. And then we move along to the total dollars to be collected in 2022 when you factor in the municipality, the county and the school board. So 23.5 million and out of every dollar collected, 43 cents stays at the local level, 39 cents to the county, 18 cents for education. And it should be noted, uh, this is a change from last year. Due to county increases, they have actually gone up a penny uh, based on previous years. So what does that mean for assessment? So if you compare 100,000 between 2021 and 2022, it's an increase of $8.49. And just a reminder that there is no uh, reassessment due to COVID-19 and actually the province has announced there'll be no new reassessment in 2022 and 2023. So the next is just the average impact uh, to a homeowner in Trent Lakes. And uh, I provided for you uh, the taxes in 2022 and 2021 based on a, uh, an, an assessed value of 404,298.93. And that average assessed value is for properties that are single family detached, single family detached on the water and seasonal dwellings on the water. So an increase of about $62.94. Uh, and the average assessed increase is 3,253.33. 
and I always like to provide a breakdown of the county levy. And once again, the Trent Lakes pays the second largest portion of that levy, and it's based on the assessment value or the assessment base. So now we'll just talk a little bit about the cost savings. So cost savings included in the 2022 budget, we have continued digitization and process efficiencies. We were able to um, purchase, find some purchasing efficiencies for our fire respirator program. We continue to do joint tendering with the county for surface treatment and calcium chloride and training opportunities, internet and telephone voting for the election. We have some operational efficiencies. Our new uh, director of public works uh, has engineering expertise and also some efficiencies for brush and yard waste grinding and compartment cleanup and digital attendance at conferences and courses. So next we're going to talk a bit about waste management and Evan is going to do that for us. Thank you very much, Donna. As mentioned, I'm the new director of public works here at the municipality of Trent Lakes. And I just wanna speak briefly just from my previous experiences at my previous municipality, that the waste program that is offered here for the municipality of Trent Lakes is very progressive. And this is thanks to all the hard work that the staff puts in on a day-to-day -day basis to find different diversion programs that we can use to increase our diversion rates and reduce the amount of waste going to the landfills. So today we, we're gonna go through a couple of things, the waste weights and costs, recycling weights, diversion rates, and some of the upcoming diversion programs. So as you can see here on this slide, the household waste has gone up from last year to the, compared to 2020. I believe this is a result of more people just spending time up at their cottages. Um, with the COVID-19, there's been more of an exodus from the city to the country. If you could go to the next slide, please. So as you can see, as a result, the, the, the amount of recycling materials that have been, has been increased as well. Um, and as mentioned, I believe this is just as uh, more people are going to the country and with the increased programs, the uh, clear bag programs and as such, they are um, uh, more uh, pushed to recycle. If you go to the next slide, please. And as you can see, the diversion rates have sort of stayed the same from this year to last year. One important thing to note is unfortunately due to COVID-19 that the reuse centers were closed. Um, this happened in early 2020, which is pretty crazy to say. Um, so now we have reopened these reuse centers and um, which have been well received by the public as they are excited to uh, uh, just limit the amount of stuff that is going to the landfill as mentioned before. Next slide, please. And another thing to note is just the waste haulage cost, cost has increased from 2021 from 2020 to 2021. One of the main drivers is, as, as everybody is aware, um, just overall the economy, everything is getting more and more expensive with these rising fuel costs. This would has a direct relation to the increase in haulage. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, the, I was very impressed with the amount of diversion programs that are being offered here at the municipality. Um, some of them we have already completed, like the mattress collection event, which occurred at the Bob Cage and Transfer Station. This was a huge success where I believe we, we received up to close to 100 mattresses at that event. Um, this is always well received by the public and it is offered by the municipality specifically for Trent Lakes um, residents. Um, there's a couple other programs that we're going through. The one is Bulky Plastics. Um, as mentioned, uh, the staff have took the initiative to get this program going. This was a program that was previously offered by Peterborough County. However, due to um, some issues they've had uh, trying to find proper uh, suppliers and people to take the plastic, the county were unable to offer it. However, our staff um, did an extra investigation to find that they could. there was an option to have it diverted, so we started that program. The intention is to run that this year and see how it goes. And if um, we have a well reception from the public, continue to offer it each year, each summer um, from May to October. A couple other the events to highlight is a paper shredding event. Um, and as well, the one big one that I've been quite proud to see go is the Food Cycler Pilot Program. If you will go to the next slide, please. The Food Cycler Program um, initially was offered in November to January 20, this January. Um, it was a 12 week program. Um, and it has received quite the uh, positive reviews from the residents in the area. As you can see on the right side where um, the data that is collected, um, when you we diverted 36 tons in that 12-week program, 
where buckhorn mollocks in total of 2021, so that'd be a 12 month um, over period of time, diverted 58.66. So these, these units are quite effective at diverting um, food waste. They also allows you not to have the backyard composter, which would limit the amount of pests and animals that you may attract. As well, due to the ge geography of this municipality, it is hard to offer a curbside compost collection program. So we find that this is a great um, opportunity to have still offer organic diversion. If you go to the next slide, please. And as mentioned, we are continuing to offer this program. This program has just started. However, there is still ample time to join the pilot project. Um, it's a great, like I said, it's a great program. You may think that because of some appliance that it may have some increase on your overall electricity bill. However, it is very, very minimal. Um, you typically, they would run the units about four or five times a week. And then you can use that, the product that is produced within the gardens for uh, increasing um, organic diversion. Anyways, that's all I have for waste management. And I'm going to toss it over to Donna for continue on capital. Thank you, Evan. So the capital spending for 2022, a large amount of that spending relates to that new bill that was built that we already talked about. And there are new sand domes at the 49 Depot, a new tandem and pumper truck. Uh, there's work at Old Name Park and the pedestrian crossovers, and there was a facility replacement plan approved, and there's going to be some work started on the new build in Buckhorn for the next couple of years. So the road projects in 2022, I won't read them all to you, but those are a list of the road projects. And next, we're doing some committee update information. So, Jesse. Thank you. So we do have two advisory committees that report to council and they're doing some great work uh, for the municipality. The first is the Parks, Recreation and Culture Advisory Committee. Uh, their major accomplishment has been the Parks, Recreation and Culture Master Plan and their ongoing work is an Open Spaces Master Plan, uh, Trent Severn Waterway Draft Management Plan Review and a Cultural Resources Master Plan. There's also the Economic Development Advisory Committee, a major recent accomplishment is the funding for the playground at Odenang Park. And ongoing work for them include the First Impressions Community Exchange, which I believe they're receiving the results of soon, um, establishing priorities for Odenang Park. There's currently a tender out for the playground. Uh, a chairs and bike repair station will be, we'll be seeing that soon. And there's still um, some determination on what a shoreline garden is going to look like there. So we thought we'd give a little update on the county official plan as well. So the plan was released uh, January 24th, 2022 for uh, comment. And council in 2017 passed a resolution to join the County of Peterborough uh, official plan. And there have been staff participating as members of the technical advisory committee as part of that process. So the official plan really serves as the municipal comprehensive review a conformity exercise to the provincial policy statement, places to grow, growth plan for the greater Golden Horseshoe, and other recent changes under the Planning Act. So it contains policies that are general and consistent across the county, and there's a local component that's specific to each township. So what is next in that process? So once that plan is approved and adopted by the province, the municipality of Trent Lakes official plan will be repealed and the in turn there'll be the municipality will be required to do a comprehensive review of the zoning bylaw to ensure conformity under that new official plan and some short-term rentals information so short-term rentals were um, a big topic uh, the last couple of years so the short-term rental group was formed in 2020 and their original um, goal was to engage stakeholders and they prepared a report with recommendations on regulating short-term um, rentals as well as developed a public consultation process. In November of 2021, a survey was distributed and there was a public feedback session. And um, then milestone three was to collect, analyze and present those findings to council. And there was a February 1st, 2022 report 
um, that shows the details of that. And now staff are working to implement a phased approach. So the next slide shows a summary of the phased approach with phase one this year being to educate, monitor, and enforce. Uh, next year, stage two will be the review of a, an implementation of a nuisance bylaw, as well as an AMP system, administrative monetary penalties. And phase three in 2024 would be to reconsider licensing and see where we're at. Um, I won't go into too much detail about the different phases, but um, it is there and on the agenda for anyone that wants more information. But in summary, in phase one in this year, there'll be a review of existing bylaws engagement of the OPP for further uh, bylaw enforcement and reviewing current practices um, and then tracking and reporting on short-term rental complaints. And the next slide just does show the phases for 2023 and 2024. And next we have the municipal election. So we just finished with the provincial election and now we're looking ahead to the 2022 municipal and school board election. And advanced voting for Trent Lakes using internet and telephone will open on October 11th at 10 a.m. And you can vote 24 seven right through to 8 p.m. on voting day. And voting day, which is October 24th, internet and telephone voting will be available as well as paper ballots at the municipal office. And that will be offered from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. So to make sure you're on the voters list, you can visit voterlookup.ca to register and confirm your details to make sure that you get the voter information letter in the mail in early October. And you can also visit trentlakes.ca slash elections for more information about voting and candidates. That's it. Well done, you folks. In there. Uh, so we're going to uh, open up to delegations now. And the first one is going to be Marlis Kirkman representing the Buckhorn Ratepayers Association. Please unmute your audio and share your camera and make your delegation. You will have 10 minutes. At nine minutes, I will do this so you know you've got a minute left. And the 10 minutes, and that's your delegation complete. And that is the same for everyone. So, Marlis, if you would like to uh, proceed, that would be great. All right. I, um, I think I've unmuted. Am I audible? Yep, you're yep. good. Thank you. Absolutely. The um, Buckhorn Ratepayers Association has traditionally had two meetings a year. Last fall, we had uh, various representatives. We had representatives from various levels of government. We had MP Michelle Ferreri, we had Mayor Clarkson, and we had Councillor Franson. Um, that was a, a fairly well attended meeting. This spring, we had Brian Emke, who was the real estate broker, to discuss the real estate market in the area. And we also had Councillor Armstrong to talk about short-term rentals. It was a very interesting meeting. We had um, the people who attended had some very good questions about real estate and also about short-term rentals. Most recently, as in last Monday, we had a debate. And uh, because of various um, factions that were working in other um, ways of organizing the debate, we had two candidates that were actually available at the meeting we had um, organized. They were the conservative and liberal candidate. And it was a very good deb debate presentation of facts. Uh, there was lots of information that was provided regarding the two, the platforms, the two parties, the conservatives and the liberals that were represented. I was glad to see how many people were at the debate. We look forward, that's as in Ellen and I, Ellen Dumas and I are the major uh, administrators of the Buckhorn Rate Payers Association. And we look forward to doing a debate for the municipal election in October. I guess the main thing I would hope for is that we continue to get more people to come to our meetings. Our first meeting in the fall, there were 20 people. And then in our um, meeting about the real estate market, we had about 15. So I think COVID has had a lot to do with that and people not wanting to come out in the public. And um, I think the meetings that were there, as I said previously, were attended by people that were very interested in what we were doing. Um, that's about it for the Buckhorn Ratepayers Association. And thank you very much for this opportunity to tell what we have been up to. 
Thank you very much, Marlis. Uh, have council any questions of Marlis or comments? I think we thank you. To, I think we also need to thank Marlis for the uh, for the uh, information that she provides to the public concerning our uh, meetings. Uh, she does a very good job of that, and uh, and we appreciate that. And if there are no more well, questions, we shall move on to our next delegation. Okay. And our next delegation is Christine Brickman, representing the Crystal Lake Community Association. Again, Christine, uh, 10 minutes, please. And if you're on, where you go? Uh, um, I am on. Uh, Jess, were you going to put something up for me? Yep, I think Anne's just pulling it up. Okay, thanks, Anne. Is that the latest version? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, and um, I'm here today representing the Crystal Lake uh, Community Association. And could you move forward? Thank you. Um, so uh, I, Christine Brickman, and uh, I'm the vice president of the uh, Crystal Lake Cottagers Community As Association. And um, we would like to uh, talk today about uh, the opportunity of having input in advance of any kind of council meetings of topics that would be of great interest to uh, waterfront seasonal residents. And uh, we do know that there are agendas that are published before council meetings, and I do read them periodically as best as I possibly can, but do know that there are often times that there are topics that are specifically of interest to the waterfront residents. And if it, there was a way that that could possibly be communicated easily in advance so that we could get that information out and perhaps be able to input in advance to any staff reports that are being made to council. I um, also wanted to mention that we have a very active executive and board, um, especially the last couple of years. We've been very uh, fortunate that we have a great group of volunteers that um, are focused on doing uh, the best we possibly can for our area community. Overall, uh, it's positive to seek input and involve the ratepayers. And if it's possible, as I mentioned, to get that input, if it's through town halls or through perhaps uh, uh, other ways of getting information from, from the seasonal and or the waterfront residents, we think that that would be a very good opportunity of sharing of um, topics of interest. And as mentioned in previous years, we have adopted the use of residents and waterfront as best as possible and community. And that we find that the use of a cottager is perhaps an older terminology and it does create a little bit of de divisiveness and it creates a little bit of us and them mentality between people that see themselves as, as permanent versus people that see themselves perhaps as um, seasonal, but they have the same uh, rights as a permanent resident would. Next slide, please. Our number one important topic that we'd like to share today, again, this is a topic that's been on every single um, annual meeting that we've had, and that is to consider the hard top of East and West Clear Bay, especially uh, now that we've got heavy development and construction going on. The road ha continues to get um, be unsafe and it's very difficult to navigate, especially this season. It's uh, full of mud holes and um, it's very, very dusty. And we just think it's, you know, it's just unsafe and it's very expensive for the municipality to keep grading on a regular basis and trying to do the gravel resurfacing. And we do notice um, that for this year in particular, the grading has stopped right at Eastview. I'm not quite sure why that is, but it, it probably is because due to the uh, heavy construction and a lot of dump trucks and vehicles going through there. We also have an ask from our uh, members that, that council members consider visiting our community on a regular basis. And that would be perhaps to attend a town hall meeting at the Galway Hall and, and meet and greet the community and, and the ratepayers. Um, other important topics, as we've all known, the sensitivity and around short-term rentals. And as a result of that, we prepared 
some guidelines and we've communicated that out to our uh, to the owners and the renters and hope that they will absorb as we know it's all really about respecting your neighbors and I think that last year there was uh, less concern being raised as far as complaints but um, you know I'm, I'm not completely sure of that but it seems as if things have tamed down a little bit um, but we want to get that out on a regular basis to make sure that people are communicating to their guests uh, that the most important thing is to respect the bylaws respect your neighbors and you know make sure that uh, everybody knows the rules of the of the community and the rules of the lake uh, the next topic is around Trent Lakes depots and the, specifically what the plans are for Galway Depot. I haven't heard any updates on that really for quite some time. And the other important topic for us is environment and water quality, which I'll get to in a, uh, on the next slide. And some of the key programs that we've been sharing with our community is the Safe and Quiet Lakes program that's been put out by uh, Muskoka and also Wake Aware and I don't know if you've seen those but both of them are excellent excellent uh, programs and videos and you know you can't share it enough to as a good reminder for making sure that Wake Aware and Wake Aware is uh, very important for the uh, for our loons to make sure that their their habitat isn't destroyed and Safe and Quiet Lakes get back to a number of things to remind uh, waterfront voters and residents of the need to to be mindful of your neighbors. Um, I just wanted to divert a little bit because we talked about politics so much that really what's the number one ask if you were to ask any waterfront resident what's the most important thing for you they will unanimously say the water quality is the most important topic. And yet we talk about that very little. We have a uh, volunteer here that uh, does the water quality testing. And it's, that program has been in place for about I think we've lost Christine's audio. Yeah. No one can hear, eh? No. Um, we can take a recess and try and get her connected, or we can um move on to the next presentation and if she comes back we can circle back to where she left off sounds good okay next delegation is from dave reed representing the economic development advisory committee please unmute your audio and share your camera and make your delegation you also will have 10 minutes are you there dave Hello, Dave. Dave is there. It just looks like he's still self-muted. Can you unmute Dave or can you hear us? Probably not. Okay, shall we try the next one? Sure. Okay, our final delegation is from Robin Johnson representing Beaver. Cavendish Hall and McGinnis Cottage Owners so, uh, Organization. Please unmute your audio and share your video. You will have 10 minutes. Council will save their questions to the end of the delegation. Are you there, Robin? Can and you hear me now? Who have we got? This is Robin Johnson. Yes, please. Go ahead. Oh, good. Yay. 
<laughs> um, there's uh, three topics that uh, I have uh, put forward that I, I wanted to discuss. And, and basically what they are is, is questions um, in regards to, uh, and I think Crystal like uh, uh, kind of uh, hit on the topic of, of water quality and lakefront. Um, one of the questions that I have is in regards to the use of fertilizer and whether the municipality has any type of um, uh, bylaw or anything to that effect um, to uh, uh, lessen the use of fertilizer on waterfront properties. And I don't know where that question would go to, but hopefully someone can answer it. Okay, we'll hold your questions till the end. So that we do. Okay, all right. Um, and the other, <clears throat> I've got three questions. That's basically all I'm going to do is uh, um, discuss these three questions. So um, the other question I have from a lot of my um, uh, 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 people here is in regards to property taxes. Obviously, in the last little while, um, I would say in the last five years, our, our property values have doubled in price. And with the ongoing um, a, a COVID protocol, the impact wasn't being used. So um, I'm assuming that our property taxes are not going to double as well. So that is something that uh, our owners want to know is how is uh, this um, inflation going to affect our property tax? So that's question number two. And question number three is in regards to long-term planning. Um, I understand that there's only certain roads that the um, a, a township has taken over. And um, as a, a person that lives on a fire route now, um, are the people that are on the fire route pay for the maintenance of um, the road and, and snow removal and so on and so forth. And I was just wondering in the long-term plan whether or not fire routes uh, will be included um, based on a, a, a certain uh, um, maintenance that's already there. In other words, if they're very well maintained, why would the uh, municipality, municipality in the future look at possibly uh, taking over the fire route for snow removal? So those are my three questions. Okay, thank you very much. Donna, would you like to uh, talk about the taxes? So thank you and through you. So we typically, the format of the meeting is that we take questions back. I can certainly do that, but it just would open that opportunity up to all of the delegates today. So perfect. Okay, so we're not we're not providing any information. Uh, through you, Mayor Clarkson. Um, at the end, after the meeting, and once we have time to gather the information on the questions asked, we uh, through the same circulation email that this information was distributed, we can answer the questions. Through that, provide answers to the questions through that format. Excellent. That would be wonderful as long as uh, we get uh, responses to those. I think it's uh, something that um, every one of the groups would be interested in. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, is yes. Sorry. If um, Christine is back on the line, uh, so if we wanted to finish up. Hey, Christine, my calculations are you've got four minutes left. Uh, Christine, you are still muted, self-muted. There you go. Thank you very much. I just wanted to circle back that um, to just end on the fact that Crystal Lake and Health and environmental is very, very important to us, and which is why we do have a uh, very robust uh, lake stewardship program. Okay, is that it? 
uh, talk. I want to talk briefly about some of the initiatives that we have. The oversized chair and the book exchange library are now in place at White Beach. We've also gone through a very extensive overhaul and updating the Crystal Lake map with all the new fire route numbers and the uh, road names that happened a few years ago. We're also having a, a AGM Zoom meeting this June, this uh, Monday coming at 7 p.m., which is usually very well attended. We've also published a, a recent newsletter and it's been distributed out to our, our membership. Um, our Facebook membership and presence continues to grow. We're at over 1,600 multiple family members. Uh, we've got over 250 actual paid members and that's trending up, which is very positive for us. We have a, a large number of uh, advertising and sponsors that brings us in quite a, a amount of money. And we also see over 42,000 hits per month on our website, which is a very, uh, as I say, a positive presence in the community. Uh, we also continue being partners with Federation of Ontario Cottages Association, Coalition of Equitable Water Flow, and the North Kawartha Lake Association. And we also continued with our donations this year to the Kinmount Food Bank, the Kinmount Gazette, the Galway Community Center. And we just recently did a uh, meet and greet at the Community Center in Kinmount. We're gonna have uh, Canada Day Flotilla, which was very, very popular the last two years. And we did the spring cleanup to keep our ditches and roadsides clean and tidy. We had our first annual and we're going to have our second this year with Haunt the Docks and we also have more events planned. And with that I thank you for your time and I did as far as the follow-up questions uh, Jesse if you could make note about our request again for the hard top surfacing for uh, Clear Bay, East and West Clear Bay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now uh, Yes. Sorry, I still have Dave Reed on. Um, he's self-muted right now, but if we wanted to return to him for his delegation, see if we can get him connected. Yep, that's what I was going to announce. Are you there, Dave? Hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. Okay, we'll just leave that until uh, we, uh, Jesse, will you let us know, you will let us know when Dave comes back. So anyone who wishes to make a delegation who has not already done so can use the raise your hand feature now to make a delegation. Do we see any hands out there? Jesse, I'll get you to look at that because I don't see them on Yeah, here. no, I'm not seeing any hands, so I'll give a last call for anyone that wants to provide a 10 minute delegation. Okay, still seeing none. So um, Dave is still on the line. He is still self muted. So um, give him one more opportunity. Um, apparently Dave is trying to talk, um, but he is muted. Okay, well then we'll get a motion to receive the delegations that we that we were able to. Uh, Deputy Mayor Windover and seconded by Councillor Armstrong. All in favor, motion is carried. We need a motion to approve the confirming bylaw. Councillor Armstrong, Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor. Motion is carried. I'm gonna give Dave one more chance before we motion to adjourn. Okay, motion to adjourn, please. Uh, Council Franzen and Councilor Lamsa. Excuse me, I, 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 don't we have a policy that we're supposed to wait 10 minutes before we? I think Jesse's just looking that up. Yeah, I, I think we're supposed to wait 10 minutes for a, if we have communication problems. Uh, 
um, if the mayor wanted to call a recess, then we can try and uh, get connected to him. Okay, so can we call a 10 minute recess? Sure. Okay. And it's 1040, so we will be back at 1050. Councillor Franson. Councillor Franson. Yep. I'm making that motion, Mayor Clarkson. Thank you. And seconded by Councillor Lambshead. All in favor? Motion is carried. Okay, all right, so um, we've had the delegations, we've had the confirming bylaw, motion to adjourn, and there's only you and I, so we're motioning to adjourn. Oh, oh we've got another members. one now. Councillor Lambshead, do you want to second the adjournment? Yes, I do. All in favor? Thank you, folks, and thanks everybody for the time they put into this. It uh, it certainly uh, is a lot of work for the length of time that it actually took. How many people wound up on the line? We we so, sorry through you, Mayor. I can't see you, but I guess we just.